I wanted to share with you this beautiful illustration of DNA. The double helix that revolutionized our understanding of biology that is in the basis of every cell in your body, every cell of every living thing has this exquisite double helix connected by basic nucleotides with a string of amino acids that can predict um, how it will function. That is what keeps us alive. And recent studies that I'm going to show you about here for the first time have been published confirming that cell phone radiation can damage DNA. It doesn't do it in the same way as ionizing radiation, but it does do it. And it disrupts disrupts the basic structure of DNA, and we can measure that disruption using standard tests that have been validated over the years. One of the fascinating studies that has been done is that of identical twins. They come from one egg. One egg at birth splits in two. It's as close to a clone as we have. If you look at the lovely patterns here, the green light, it's methylation of these chromosomes. These chromosomes look pretty close to related to one another at three, age three for these identical twins, but look at what happens at age 50. If you look carefully, they don't even look like they're related to one another. Look back, they're pretty similar here. Look here. What we can say is that genes give us the gun, but the environment pulls the trigger and it's the gene-environment interaction. Now, a lot of the sponsors of this meeting work on food, and food is medicine, as Hippocrates said thousands of years ago, but it's not enough, no matter how healthy a diet you may eat, if you're not also reducing your exposure to other toxic things in the environment. Um, I'm not gonna take a lot of time to show you this, but it's really, it's a fascinating image, because on the top you have Identical twins. You can see that identical twins, at, when they're young, on the top left image, their genes between the two of them look very similar. But by the time they're older, they don't look as closely related. That's in the top right, uh, right slide. For the bottom, you see dizygotic twins. That's fraternal twins. And immediately at birth, you see they don't look even necessarily closely related. And you all know examples of fraternal twins that don't even look alike. As you can see, by the time they get to be older, they don't even look related to one another. Now, this, this is an example of a test of DNA that has been standardized, and you can run it through computers, that was originally developed, exquisitely developed by Henry Lai and B.J. Singh in 1994. And what this shows is that the sham, which is to say the unexposed DNA, is on the left top of this slide. On the right is what happens with exposure to the equivalent of 1,600 chest x-rays, which we know are damaging to DNA. On the bottom of the center is 24 hours of exposure to a mobile phone. You can see a tail called a comet, of the DNA is evident in this study. Now, this study was done in 1994 that I just showed you there. That was 1994. This was in 2006, a multi-million dollar study in 12 different laboratories in seven European countries supported by the European Union. And the researchers were so surprised by the results showing that cell phone radiation could damage DNA that they threw out the instruments, got all new equipment, and repeated it. Because that's what scientists do when they're concerned about their findings. And they were able to show, again, clear evidence that cell phone radiation, at that time, could damage DNA. This is 2006. Now, other work that was done in 2014, shown here, and 2015, showed that if you looked at the impact in liver cancer cells, which we know already cancerous, if you look at the impact of exposure to cell phone radiation, 
below levels that are permitted by cell phones and at the levels. You see on the black, the first bar shows you what the unexposed controls with no exposure to a liver carcinogen. The next black bar shows you what happens with liver cancer cells if you let them be alone for a while in the animals. And the red ones show you what happens when you add to the liver cancer cells exposure to cell phone radiation. Okay. So if someone has already initiated cancer cells and they have a phone in their pocket close to their body or they keep an iPad on their bodies, you can accelerate the growth of cancer. This shows a more than doubled increase in a type of liver cancer associated with cell phone radiation. All of these studies were done before the National Toxicology Program produced its, its results. The National Toxicology Program produced results designed to test that there was no impact if you didn't have heat from cell phone radiation. They specifically designed the study not to produce any heat to expose animals to cell phone radiation. And here's what they found. Increases in brain tumors and a very rare malignant schwannoma of the heart. Heart tumor. Based on this, other scientists have concluded that the National Toxicology Program study supports the need to reclassify cell phone radiation as a human carcinogen. That's what we have now. They showed DNA damage in multiple organs in rats and mice, and I'm going to briefly show you this. And because of these results, the Environmental Health Trust, the organization that I founded, is now leading an effort for a lawsuit against the FCC, accusing them of being arbitrary and capricious because they had failed to address the findings of the US government, the French government, and others showing reproductive, genetic, and cancer-causing impact of current levels of cell phone radiation. And I will invite you to, to join us in supporting that lawsuit at the end of my talk because lawsuits, like most things in our country, are expensive. But we are determined because it is, in our opinion, a violation of science and common sense to ignore these findings from the US government's flagship testing agency. As some of you may not know, the National Toxicology Program is the gold standard for testing drugs and chemicals and radiation. For more than 40 years, they have produced studies of the impact of these things on human health. And their findings have been regarded as significant. This is the first time in history that the results of the National Toxicology Program have been completely ignored and dismissed by another federal agency. And the scientists who remain there are unable to speak publicly. But one who can is Dr. Ronald Melnick, a senior advisor to Environmental Health Trust. And he has pled, he designed this study, that it is clear proof of harm. And I want to show you some of that evidence now on DNA damage. They did a comet assay, like I showed you before, but a much more sophisticated version. And they showed DNA damage in the frontal cortex of male mice. That's, that's right here. Now think about it. These mice are being exposed for their whole body to a level of radiation that does not cause heat. Now, it's always been difficult to get mice to make cell phone calls. <laughs> so that is why the study design had the animals running free. They thought about trying to strap a mini phone to the animal's head, but that would actually be pretty uncomfortable. Although, sadly, I have seen women with hijab that have the phone right here, or men riding motorcycle messengers with the phone right here. Have you guys seen that? Uh, or think about the AirPods. The AirPods. Wired Magazine has just reported, CNET has reported, it's taking off, it's helping Apple financially. 
and it's providing microwave radiation right to and through the brain of young people today. I think it's a hideous technology, quite frankly, because we're taking something that can damage DNA and putting it closer to the brain than it has ever been in history. So this is just to show you the male rat hippocampus looking at a type of cell phone radiation that you can get today. And you can see the levels of exposure are on the bottom of that graph, 1.5, 3, and 6 watts per kilogram. And there's a significant increase in the tail of DNA, meaning it's significantly extended with non-thermal levels of radiation, confirmed not to increase the temperature of the animals. Here you see it in male and female mice. That is, you have damage to the DNA in male and female mice and male rats. Why are, is the government doing nothing about these findings? I think that's where we all have to thank the 5G group and all of you who are engaged in public activity here. Because it's only when people become more informed about this science that steps can be taken to change um, the dreadful policies that the U.S. government is undertaking.